the fourth truth, which forms the 33rd degree. The truth of compassionateness and bestowal of provision. That is, the giving over the whole face of the globe, within the earth, in the air above it, and the ocean around it, to all animate beings, especially those endowed with spirit, and among them essentially the impotent, the weak, and the young, all of their necessary sustenance, material and immaterial, in the most solicitous manner, deriving from it dry and rude soil, from solid bone-like dry pieces of wood, and in the case of the most delicate of all forms of sustenance, from between blood and urine, at the proper time, in orderly fashion, without any omission or confusion, in front of our eyes, by an unseen hand. Yes, the verse, God is the provider, the firm possessor of strength, restricts to God the task of sustaining and providing. And the verse, there is no moving thing on earth, but depends on God for its sustenance. He knows its resting place and storage place. All is in a book, perspicacious. Provides a dominical guarantee and pledge to furnish provision for all men and animals. Similarly, the verse, the beasts do not carry their sustenance, God sustains them and you, and He is all-hearing, all-knowing, establishes and proclaims that it is God who guarantees and provides for all impotent, powerless, weak, and wretched creatures that are unable to secure their own sustenance in an unexpected fashion, indeed from the unseen, even out of nothing. It is he, for example, who provides for insects on the ocean bed and their young. This proclamation is directed in particular to those men who worship causes and are unaware that it is he who bestows provision from behind the veil of causality. Numerous other verses of the Quran and numerous pieces of cosmic evidence unanimously demonstrate that it is the compassionateness of a single glorious provider that nurtures all animate beings. Now the trees require a certain form of sustenance that have neither power nor will. They remain therefore in their places, trusting in God, and their provision comes hastening to them. So too the sustenance of infants flows to their mouths from wondrous small pumps, aided by the solicitude and tenderness of their mothers. Then, when the infants acquire a little power and will, the milk ceases. These various instances clearly prove that licit sustenance is not proportionate to will and power, but comes in relation to weakness and impotence which induce trust in God. Just as the risale i nur explains and proves the truth of the Qur'an in a way that is in conformity with the physical sciences, so it gives clear answers to the questions, What am I? Where did I come from? Where will I go when I die? What are my true duties and functions? Where do other beings come from, and where will they go? What are they in reality? It explains these, the most important matters facing everyone, convincingly, with clarity, and in an attractive style, illuminating minds and spirits. In this age, the enemies of religion and Islam have put the weakening of the bases of belief at the top of their programs, especially this last 25 years. The many covert assaults on the pillars of belief and conspiracies against them have been terribly destructive. Doubt or denial concerning even one of the pillars of belief is very often more damaging than indifference toward the finer points of religion. This is why what takes priority at the present time is to transform belief by imitation 
into certain affirmative belief. By another name, belief by investigation. What is important now is to strengthen and to save belief. It has become absolutely essential to concentrate on the basis of belief. This is the most pressing need in the Islamic world today. What is the use of trying to restore and decorate the rooms of a building with collapsed foundations? Can a tree with rotten roots be revived by spraying its branches and leaves? The human being resembles a palace, the foundations of which are the pillars of belief. He resembles a tree whose roots are the principles of belief. The most important of the pillars of belief is belief in God Almighty, then belief in prophethood, and the resurrection of the dead. This is why the knowledge people should strive most to acquire is knowledge about belief. Knowledge about the matters of belief is the highest sort of knowledge. Belief does not consist of a brief ascent. It comprises numerous degrees. Belief by initiation may be easily overcome by the raging currents of misguidance of the present day whereas certain affirmative belief is unshakable and inextinguishable. The person who attains to such belief will be steadfast and unwavering even in the most violent storms. The most fanatically atheistic philosopher even will not be able to cause him doubts. It is because of this that what we give importance to is to persist in reading attentively and seriously books that teach us how to acquire certain affirmative belief that strengthen our belief and will lead us to everlasting happiness. Otherwise, the calamitous maelstroms of the present will undoubtedly drag us down into the depths. Our only salvation is to cling to the commentary that expounds the verses of the Quran, which are about belief, and look to the present age. There are two sorts of Quranic commentaries. The first is the well-known kind of commentary. Commentaries of this sort expound and elucidate the Quran's phraseology, words, and sentences. The second sort explains, proves, and elucidates with powerful arguments the Quran's truths related to belief. This sort has great importance. Sometimes the well-known literal commentaries include the sort in summary fashion. But the Risa Alayhi Nur has made it its basis directly and is a commentary on the Quran's meanings which silences obstinate philosophers in an unprecedented manner. The Risa Alayhi Nur is a work of several volumes that for the edification of humanity explains rationally and objectively the truths of the Holy Quran, which for 14 centuries has guided millions of people along the straight path. Now I am going to read a number of passages from the Risa Lai Nur about belief, the Quran, and the Prophet Muhammad, upon whom be blessings and peace. As I read, there may be brothers and sisters who want further explanations. However, if asked, Ustad Bed Yuzaman used to say this when reading to his students. The Risa Lai Nur provides sufficient explanations of the questions of belief. The Risale Inur's teacher is the Risale Inur itself. It doesn't require other teachers. Each person can benefit from it in accordance with his capacity. Even if you don't understand everything completely with your mind, your spirits, hearts, and consciences all receive their share. The degree to which you benefit from it will be of great profit to you.